JAKPA, the human capital flight phenomenon in Nigeria and the growing emergency. The, the menace of human capital flight in Nigeria is gradually nearing epidemic proportions. Every other day, young Nigerians, both gainfully employed and underemployed, are leaving the country in droves in search of greener pastures. The proverbial grass has become so withered on this part of the globe that its young talents have all become disillusioned. Jakpa, a Yoruba word which represents running or living away, is a phenomenon of choice today and the singular ideology that unites Nigerians large yet growing young population. Education is being seen as the best bet to get visas easily abroad with various countries offering scholarships for masters and undergraduate programs, some of which come with an option for permanent residency. While the health sector has historically been the most hit by this phenomenon, it has now taken a deep root amongst other professionals lawyers, bankers, engineers, software developers, ETC. In the last two weeks, at least three of my friends jetted out of the country after becoming so frustrated with life and career here. Just yesterday, a colleague of mine quit his job as a leading law practice and is set to travel to Canada in a matter of days. An economy associated by astronomical unemployment indices, rising poverty, inequality, insecurity, poor cap per capita income, amongst other socioeconomic challenges, has conduced to a debilitating brain drain with potentially unhealthy consequences for the socioeconomic development of Nigeria. But who cares about this when faced with a decision that borders on survival? That is the question. Why is human capital flight in Nigeria invariably leads to high foreign remittances back home. The negative consequences for the country far outstrips the perceived benefits. The human capital of any economy in today's knowledge-based global economy is its greatest resource. Therefore, no amount of foreign remittances can compensate for the sheer investment in the human capital of other already advanced economies, such as the United States, Britain, Canada, Australia, and several parts of Europe. The above state of affairs paints the picture of a country in a human capital crisis. Unfortunately, comments credited to a senior minister of the current administration to the effect that her pool of medical professionals can leave the country if they so desire does not, portray, does not betray the mindset of a government conscious of this social anomaly. Yes. To stem the tide of the growing wave of human capital flight in Nigeria, the government must show considerable commitment and in investment in the education and health sectors of the economy. Now we're having this discussion at a time when the university system has been shut down for over six months, owing to the industrial action by academics in the sector, certainly leaves much to be desired. Not long ago, Nigeria used to be a net attractor of foreign professionals in her workforce, including students with the associated economic benefits for the country. If the contrary is the case today, we must pause to ask ourselves what happened. An objective answer to that question might well hold the keys to reversing the ugly trend of human capital flight in the country, now famous for the world. Jackpa. I don't know what Remod wants us to do. Do you want us to stay or you want us to go? Because we all want to go. Some of us are here for different reasons. And the Jackpa thing, people used to frown at it, criticize people that travel. But now, those of us that are staying back are beginning to look like we are not thinking. Because it is predictable out there. You're a truck driver. But you can tell, you can predict safely what you will earn and how you would live with your income and your, 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 your manner of labor. Here, to a large extent, it doesn't even matter what you do, where you're from, you are exposed to all the risk that is associated with living here. 
I know you talked about uh, the health sector and also the education sector, but there's also, there's also insecurity. And if you check this your JAKPA trend, it's very, very common or very, very, uh, what's the word now? Linked or very associated, I think the word is associated. Associated with those people who are in the middle class, which is the working class, which is the potential bourgeois. leaders of tomorrow, and almost bourgeois, maybe almost bourgeois. Why are they going? These people are educated, they are working so hard, they are paying taxes, meaning they have rights to certain things in the economy. They have rights to power, rights to security, rights to everything. And they're not getting any of them. And they are working and paying taxes. And that's why you're having a lot of this exflux. There's a word like exflux. People are living. In those days, to Jakba, you had to go and do prostitution in Europe. You had to go and do minia jobs in, in, I mean, all over the world. And then people were living because they had to work very hard to be rich here. So you had to go do drugs or prostitution. Today, you just need to be very educated and you move. And I will tell you something, because a lot of my friends have moved. People are not moving because of themselves anymore. People are living because of their children. People are saying things like, wow, we've done eight years of this guy, eight years of this guy. What if a worse off person or somebody on this same path as the current president takes over again? That's another eight years. Hmm. So they are going for their children. Exactly. So it, it, it's actually a big problem. And it brings me back to what... Elijah said at the beginning, the government has to go back. It's not a matter of making things difficult for us to leave. You have to go back and solve the problem. It's not a, something you can fire. What's that? You put on fire. Don't smoke. Say. It's not smoke. Blue it's smoke. actually very, very deep. I consider Jack Marin every day because I wonder what I'm doing here. So it's not about me. It's for my children. I mean, I, 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 people can say what, I mean, people have their own opinions, but that's my own opinion. Please, please, uh, go ahead. So I think, Mr. Yemo, um, um, listening to what you have just said, just let me feel sad and a little bit of emotional. The reason why I said this is because, because I think Africa, we're the one um, raising in the world that we love our continent. We, we, we have strived, like our time achieved. Some a lot of trial, trial and tribu uh, tribulations that have affected us in Africa. Like I'm, I'm from Sierra Leone. Like, like there are people who will not leave Sierra Leone for anything. And then, um, even though we had ten years of the war, civil, whatever. And then I know my grandmother returned back to Sierra Leone because she loves the country so much. We, we from America. And then now you saying this. There's a friend, a Nigerian boy I studied with in India. It was like seven years ago. As a certified ethical worker. It's wonderful in, 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 in Red Hat, Sava. Two weeks ago, before coming to Nigeria, I told her I'll be coming to Nigeria. They sent me a picture of a Canadian visa. She said, I'm leaving for Canada. I said, why are you going? He said, Nigeria, everything is finished. She said, there's nothing I can do. So, and what our leaders don't understand is our natural resources is not the oil, not the gold, not the diamond. It's human capital. So we look at a country like South Africa. You will never find South Africa that want to leave. Because they have an industrialized uh, um, uh, economy. And secondly, they have government that cares about them. All we ask for in West Africa in general, this Sierra Leone, Ghana, Cameroon, and all over, just show concern. Care exactly. about us. Provide, know that one day I'm going to get sick. You have the resources. You have all the money. You can go anywhere you want to go. But make sure that when I get sick, there's a medical facility available. Make sure there's fire in my house. There's an ambulance that's going to come and quench that fire. Baby. We just need that. Leave us with the rest. Leave us with the rest. And then if you can leave us with the rest, and then I feel like we will stay. Mm. Yes. I might want to say something. something. Yeah. Okay, so my concern in all of this Jakba issue is actually the fact that our grandparents were Nigerians. Our parents are Nigerians. We are Nigerians. Our children are going to be mixed. Yes, because we're going, and our children's children are going to probably be Americans and Canadians, like fully, you know. So there's a gradual fade out of yeah. culture. And it's, there's a gradual, gradual fade out of tradition, you know, of our values. And somebody, a friend of mine told me that um, very close to a child's school in Canada, there is a cannabis store. Yes. So you can actually, ca uh, cannabis is actually like, Drugs. there's nothing bad about it. I know most of us in Nigeria will say, oh, cannabis, oh, God forbid. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, in Nigeria, I'll be like, oh, it was, God forbid, my children must not even cite it. But then in Canada, there's a school, there's a store. So you can actually, as a parent, I could go pick my kid and just grab some, you know, 
grab some. <laughs> yeah, so, so those are the things that give us concern about JAPA. Like my friend was telling me, oh, and, and now, and, I, and her daughter was actually asking her, mommy, um, my teacher said, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a girl, like telling me I'm a girl. So, I, and, and I told her, come tell her she's a girl. She must know that she can never be a boy. Because now in the UK, in the US, it, yes, you, yeah, you can, act, I can actually you decide can to wake up tomorrow. I say, mommy, I want to be a man. You know, like what's happening to Jeff Bezos' uh, son. Mm. He's, he even gave himself a so female no, name. He said his name is Alicia, right? Or what did they call himself? Oh, I can't remember the name. So he came to his father and said, Daddy, you are the owner of Twitter, right? Fine, I want to be a boy. So you know, those are the concerns about Jack Pa, but anyway. God helping us, let's instill the right values in our children now. Well, the issue of uh, gender, it's a very, very dicey situation. We don't want to go in that. But anyway, the point taken is, we have to sit up as governments. We really have to sit up as government because people are leaving the country. We, we can't affect to have brain drain on the, on the economy. Just imagine the adverse effect it has in Nigeria. So it's, it's a very, very serious problem. We need to consider it seriously. So um, I, I quite agree, and I'm particularly um, captivated by the thought of... Um, Sorry, I, can't, I don't get the name now. That has the borders on the, the cultural implications of uh, the potential generation. We have, all, we have all been fixated by the economic uh, consequences, but that is also an aspect of it that we may not uh, quantify in terms of the consequences. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, as Mr. Uh, uh, Elijah said, um, it, ha it, it must take its turn around in situation here for this drift to be reversed. Until that is seen, I don't see, I don't see that movement uh, stopping anytime soon. Juliet is next after this timeout.